So the title of this video is a little bit clickbaity because most of this video is going to focus on explaining how AI video interviews work, where you might encounter them, and why some people consider them to be a bit problematic. However, I did do a ton of research on tips for AI-based video interviews, so if that is what you clicked on this video for, I have included the timestamp for where I start talking about that here as well as in the description box below. But you should watch the whole video because I think you might learn something. Also, if you're new here and you want to keep learning about artificial intelligence, you can stay up to date by subscribing to my channel and leave a comment below with whether or not you think AI-based video interviews are a good idea and why. Okay, let's get started. Using algorithms to expedite the hiring process isn't actually that new. Companies began incorporating algorithms into the hiring process in the early 2000s, and it has become an increasingly popular method of filtering through hundreds or thousands of job applications to find the ideal candidate. These algorithms can be as basic as looking for keywords in resumes, or as complex as training AI systems based on past resumes of successful employees to find new potentially successful candidates. The latter approach, however, has been known to introduce some issues of bias, typically magnifying the human biases present in the hiring system. For example, Amazon attempted to introduce a system like this into their hiring process, and they found that the algorithm picked a disproportionate number of male candidates for technical roles. When they looked into the terms of the algorithm prioritized as important in deciding whether or not an applicant should proceed through the hiring process, the term women's, i.e. women's soccer team, was penalized, resulting in fewer female candidates making it through the process. If you're interested in learning more about the history of and issues that come with using algorithms in the hiring process, I highly recommend checking out this paper. However, using algorithms to process video interviews is actually pretty new. I couldn't find an exact date on when companies started adapting this process, but I think it's reasonable to say that it became popular in the mid-2010s. So, how exactly do these AI-evaluated video interviews work? Let's go through them step by step. First, a candidate will record their answers to a set of prompt questions. These questions depend somewhat on the company, and I've included an example list of questions in the description, but they're generally pretty standard interview questions. Candidates typically have a limited amount of time to respond and may or may not get multiple tries. Once the candidate has finished recording all of their answers, the video is saved and stored for a later analysis. This is called an asynchronous video interview, as the two parts of an interview, the candidate responding to questions and an interviewer or algorithm judging the candidate based on their responses, are not synchronized. That is, they don't happen in real time. In contrast, a synchronous video interview might be something like a Skype interview. An algorithm then reviews these videos and assigns a score. The details of the score will depend on both the algorithm itself as well as the traits and factors that both the developers and the company using the algorithm are looking to optimize for. In some cases, the recordings are also reviewed by a human being, either separately from the algorithmic review or after the algorithmic review has occurred in order to check it. Finally, a person looks at these scores and chooses which candidates will make it to the next step in the hiring process based on the scores, among other things. The biggest name in AI video interviewing right now is probably a company called HireVue, although there are other companies that offer similar services. So where might you encounter AI interviews? Well, they generally seem to be popular at companies that have a lot of applicants for a few roles. Institutions like banks, financial institutions, consulting companies, etc. In theory, these systems make it both easier and more time efficient for them to find ideal candidates, as they don't have to sort through hundreds or thousands of applications by hand. Personally, I started noticing their use in around 2016, when my friends who were applying to industry internships were having to do these video recordings instead of having a phone interview or a video interview with a real person. At the time, I didn't realize that there was any sort of algorithmic processing of these interviews after the fact, and I'm pretty sure my peers didn't either. And for a lot of people in 2020, this is still probably true. Now, for the part that you've all been waiting for, how exactly are these algorithms evaluating us? This section is going to be largely based on academic research on this topic because the software used by companies like HireVue involve proprietary algorithms that aren't available to the public. As usual, all sources are in the description. You can find patents for software used by companies online. 
However, in typical patent fashion, they are very vague. Generally speaking, AI video interview algorithms are aiming to quantify your personality and character traits. They're less focused on your skill sets. This is usually accounted for in a resume review either by a different algorithm or by a human being, and are more focused on traits like emotional stability, agreeableness, extroversion, confidence, and openness. Evaluating these traits typically relies on facial expression and speech analysis. And the specifics for how these traits are identified vary at best and are unclear at worst. For example, an algorithm might look to the shape of a person's mouth to figure out whether or not they're happy or sad based on past trends in other labeled data. Speech analysis might look to tone and inflection as well as the specific words that a candidate uses. Traits like emotional stability are much harder to quantify in part because they rely on human rating systems which are subjective even with expert rating. In fact, a few of the papers that I found used physical attractiveness as evaluated by a human rater as a metric, which gross, but also super subjective. Systems like the Emotional Facial Action Coding System, which breaks down different facial expressions by muscle and then assigns them to an emotion, can help developers better pinpoint the specific movements or facial traits that prompt algorithmic outcomes. In general, developing AI-based emotion identification or emotionally intelligent AI can be a pretty challenging task because not everyone expresses emotion the same way and not everyone interprets speech or facial expressions as the same emotion. This also makes it really difficult to generalize smaller data sets to the larger population. It also doesn't help that people don't react to AI video interviews the same way they react to talking to a real person. Anecdotally, people tend to be more awkward and uncomfortable when making a recording of themselves than they are if they're talking to a human being. Unless, of course, they're a YouTuber, in which case it's the other way around. Interestingly, in a paper in late 2019, researchers studied how applicants react to traditional synchronous video interviews compared to asynchronous AI-based interviews. They found that, compared to traditional interviews, applicants didn't like AI interviews, but also didn't perceive them to be more or less fair than traditional interviews. However, a different group of researchers reached the same conclusion in a 2016 paper that compared synchronous video interviews to asynchronous video interviews rated by real people, not an AI. So it seems like the video recording turns people off more than the AI itself. What about the training data? For my research, there are relatively few public data sets that can be used for this kind of software. Now, that doesn't mean that the companies developing the software are relying solely on these data sets. They may have acquired other data sets, either from the companies that they work with or from their own personal data collection, in order to make these systems more robust. However, as we've discussed in AI 101, the limited nature of the data set may impart biases into the model. The labeling of these public data sets also varies depending on their original intended use, and so they may not translate well to this particular task. Finally, there are concerns that people who don't speak or use their face to express emotion like the average ideal candidate, neurodiverse people, but also people for whom the target language is not their first language, may be penalized in these systems for being dissimilar to the training data. Now, for all the talk of potential bias and discrimination in these systems, it's important to note that we don't actually know whether these systems are better or worse at evaluating candidates than humans are. Human judgment of other humans isn't a particularly great gold standard for whether or not a candidate was judged fairly. And human bias in the hiring process has been an issue for pretty much ever, and I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. However, algorithmic decision making has been known to amplify human biases, so I do think it is a real and valid concern. So if you made it this far into the video, or if you skipped the timestamp that I included in the beginning, you might be wondering if there are any strategies that you can use to do well in an AI-based video interview. I'll start by saying that the vast majority of AI-based interview software that you'll encounter is proprietary, and so there's no way that I can know anything about how these decisions are being made, what kind of training data they used, or what specific facial expressions or keywords they might be looking for in a candidate. Basically, I'm not responsible for whether you actually get a job from this video. However, there were four main tips that frequently came up in my research. First, eye contact is important. Specifically, look into the camera, not your own face. This is likely for a couple reasons, not all having to do with your scoring. 
And in fact, one of the main reasons is probably because these systems were calibrated to deal with head-on images. And so looking away from the camera or turning your head may affect its ability to identify your facial expression. Eye contact may also factor into confidence scores. One of the things that I find a little bit funny about this one is that in a human interview, too much eye contact is an actual problem, but that may not be the case in an AI interview. My second tip, and this one might come a little bit out of left field, is check your technology. Some AI interviews require internet access. Make sure you have a stable internet connection that won't drop during the time that you need to record. Charge your laptop or plug it in so that you can make sure that the whole thing goes through. And make sure your microphone is working correctly because poor audio quality might affect the ability of the software to analyze your speech. Third, dress like you would for an in-person interview. While it's unlikely that these algorithms are looking for whether you're wearing a suit versus a t-shirt, HireVue emphasized being clean and presentable like you would be for an in-person interview. This probably actually has less to do with the automated evaluation of your recording and more to do with the fact that a human will look at this at some point and you can be penalized on that end. Although, according to HireVue's website, they are looking to remove humans from the process entirely. Fourth and finally, act natural. Now, I know as soon as I say that, everyone's going to act stereotypically natural, which in truth is actually super awkward. But trying to act like the perfect candidate will also likely come off as awkward or unnatural. And the whole point of the software is to identify erratic behavior. So I would imagine it won't work that much in your favor. Practice the answers to the questions before the recording so that you can focus on being yourself, even if that means being a slightly nervous version of yourself. In other words, as uncomfortable as that might seem, treat it like a traditional interview. Now, personally, I think that these systems should always be used in conjunction with a real person. Both the algorithm and the person may have their own biases, but exclusive reliance on an algorithm that no one except the company who makes it really knows the inner workings of can result in potential hiring bias, as well as missing out on really great candidates who just don't fit into the algorithm's mold of what is good. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my current patrons. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook if you'd like to see more of my day-to-day -day PhD life, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.